everybody, it's Dan Lawelba, the Tarp Guy. We're gonna do a quick video here today on how to assemble the Aero Easy Cover Power Pack Spring Assembly on a 24 foot trailer, but this would be applicable whether it's a trailer or a dump truck or whatever. So let's take a quick look. So the first thing I did was found the pivot mount location for the spring assemblies and for detailed information on that, I have several videos that you can watch to, uh, to find that location, but basically, there's the rear of the trailer to my left, the front of the trailer to my right, and you can see how Arrow's mount has a little bit of an angle to it. And if you look close, you'll see that it tells you where you'll put your bolts for each side. So we are on the passenger side. You can see that the passenger holes are here and here. That gives the pivot mount a little tilt towards the rear and that'll put more tension on the spring when it's fully installed. Here's a quick layout of what we're gonna install. So we have two washers, our retaining clip, a black insert and a white insert. And depending on what side of the, of the body you're on, uh, either the white one or the black one will go on first. On the driver's side, typically you'll put the black one on and on the passenger side, the white one will go on first. Here's our springs. Arrow uses a double torsion spring. Most manufacturers have a single torsion spring, so rather than having a hook on both ends, most manufacturers have a hook on one end. And then here's our power pack housing. Um, they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one goes on first on either side. When we install them, the leg will be pointing towards the rear of the trailer, as I mentioned, to my left. So the first thing we're gonna take is one of the washers. I think it's an inch and a quarter inch washer. And we're gonna slide that right on the pivot point. It's gonna go all the way to the back. We're gonna grab one of the housings. Again, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna slide that on over top of the pivot mount. And as I mentioned, because we are on the passenger side, I'm going to grab the white insert, slide that over top. And on the insert, you can see there's a little bevel over back. That's going to go inside a hole on the housing. Well, got to put the phone down. So now the spring pushed fully to the back of the, of the little power pack housing. And you can see how the hook will be grabbed on those little notches. So as I pull up, I can feel the torsion on the spring. All right, so we grab the additional two springs. They're gonna go on the same way. Whoops, that would not be the same way. going to take the second bushing and again with a little beveled end, notched end, I'm going to slide that over with the notch out. Let's see if that right over top. All right, take the outside housing. Let's go right over top. It's gonna take a little, sometimes it takes a little bit of a wiggle to get it on, so let me get it on. So both sides, the inner and outer of the power pack are on. 
The next thing, I will put a washer on the outside here and then a retaining clip. Can't really do that with one hand, so I'll show you the end result. So I've installed the washer on the back side, that went in first. Then the spring clip or retaining clip goes right here. There's a little groove. I'm not gonna be able to see it. There's a little groove in the pivot mount. You have to make sure that retaining clip goes into that groove or you'll lose your power pack while you're going down the road. So that's what it looks like now. We'll add the arm, get the thing fully assembled, and I'll take a view of it at the end. Quick side note. Depending on how you want the bend in the upper arm, you can see the little upper arm there. Depending on how you want that to land at the front of the trailer or dump body will depend on how you install the housing here. So it can, it can be installed either way so that the flat on the arm is up or the flat on the arm can be down. In this case, I have the flat up, which will allow me to have a low profile on the arm at the front so the arm will be less likely to get hit with the bucket loader or a bobcat if you're doing any side loading. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end. If you wanted the arm to have the higher uh, profile at the front, you would simply flip the housing. All the internals would stay the same. Um, the, 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 the bushings, everything would stay the same. You would just have this flipped the other way so that the flat would be down rather than up. So when the system's fully installed, you can see that the arm has a sharper angle down at the front and then it comes down to the power pack pivot point. So that's, that's the low profile I was referring to. So if you want to have the arm in that low profile position, when you're working on the power pack, when you're first installing it, the flat surface would have to be on the top when the arm is facing the rear. Currently, the flat surface is on the bottom because the arm has swung forward and it's, of course, finished at the top, at the front. All right, thanks for watching. I'll have my contact information at the end of the video. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Thanks.